Hello everyone, it's Laura here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm gonna show you how to make a galaxy background and I will also be comparing the looks you get when using traditional distress inks versus the oxide inks. As a base for my backgrounds I decided to use Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock because this is a wonderful support when you want to use distress inks and oxides. They blend really nicely on top of it and to make the comparison more meaningful, I decided to use the same colors of distress inks and oxides and also to lay them down in the same way. So as you see now, I'm first putting down the, you know, the brighter colors. So I started off with picked raspberry and now I am using peacock feathers. On the left of the screen, you see the background I am building using the oxides, whereas on the right side of the screen, you can see, um, you know, the background that I'm making with the distress inks. I'm adding, so first the brighter colors, so this will be the colors that will show through my uh, black sky in the end. And I'm using, as I said, picked raspberry, peacock feathers, and this is wilted violet. At this stage, I'm not worrying too much about blending the colors together. What I'm really trying to do is to block in the areas where I want this color to be so that it has, you know, it makes sense in my head somehow in the vision I have for the final result. At this point, I'm adding faded jeans and I'm going all around the edges of my background and I will also fill in the areas that, are, you know, that were left empty um, when I previously applied the other colors. And again, Blending is not really a concern at this point because I will take care of that when the background is almost ready. And already now you can see the difference you get between, uh, you know, the background I am making with the oxides and the one uh, with the distress inks. The distress inks are more vibrant, uh, but the distress oxides have this like soft well, it has been defined chalky look, but I would call it more like a velvety feel. Like uh, when I showed the cards to my husband, he said it looks like the card would be soft when you touch it. And I think that's a really nice way to describe it. Anyway, I am uh, done with laying down the faded jeans at this point and I'm adding back some of the colors. So I just came in with uh, picked raspberry and again with wilted violet and I'm starting to do a little bit of blending between the colors and making sure I don't have areas um, that are left white. And now I am repeating the same process with the distress inks. So I am adding faded jeans on the edges of the cardstock and on the areas in between the different colors in the middle. And if you have troubles with blending distress sinks, um, I would really recommend you try this Bristol Smooth cardstock if you haven't tried it. This is by Strathmore because it really makes the job much, much easier. The ink sits on top of the cardstock because it has some kind of coating on top, I guess. And it gives you a little bit of extra time to move the color around and to blend it with the other colors. And here I am adding the final touches with uh, the faded jeans. And now I'm coming back in with the picked raspberry, the wilted violet and the peacock feathers. And I'm blending the colors a little bit together. Again, blending is not really crucial at this stage because I will later on come back in with black suit, distress ink and oxide. And I will cover almost everything. So that's the stage at, at which I want to have a nice transition between the colors. And the time has come for the black suit. Uh, so I am adding it in the same areas where I added the faded jeans, pretty much. I am for now staying away from uh, the areas where I added the peacock feathers, the picked raspberry and the wilted violet, but I will, in a little bit, you will see me go over those areas too with a very light hand so that I would uh, dim them out a little bit so that they don't just look like big splotches of color that don't make sense and it's not a galaxy background, it's just a mess. Although I have to say with galaxy background to really have to trust the process because it looks awful until the very end, really until I added the stars and I'll show you later how to do that. This looked horrible but you just have to sit through and continue doing it and trust that it will look nice at the end because 
I honestly like the way these cards turn out. Although at this point, you know, you might be thinking, what, what am I looking at? Why am I still here? I should probably just do something better with my time. But I promise you it's going to look nice in the end. And this is where I add the black sooth on top of the brighter areas. And I will later come back in with those same colors and try to have a nice blend. So at this point, you want to start thinking about blending your colors in a way that uh, you will get a nice transition. And I can tell you already that one of the big differences that I found uh, between the oxides and the inks shows at this stage exactly because when you come back with the lighter colors on top of the darker colors with the oxides, you will actually be able to cover a little bit of the black with, you know, for example, the peacock feathers right now. And you will get a beautiful halo effect, which I think works really, really great for a galaxy background. And because these dressings are transparent, I mean, they're not as opaque. When you add a lighter color on top of a darker color, it will not show. So the only thing I will manage to achieve is sort of a blend, so a smoother transition between the lighter shades and the black suit. Uh, suit. <laughs> but I will not get this nice halo effect that I get uh, with the oxides, because the oxides have this pigment component to them, and which the inks don't. Anyway, I am now moving on to my distressing background and I'm adding uh, distress suit, distress ink in black suit to the edges of the card and to the same areas again where I put down the faded jeans. And I am basically repeating the same steps that I took before because I wanted this comparison to be meaningful. So I'm really trying to build the two backgrounds in the same manner. So taking the same steps so that when you look at the two cards, what you're comparing is basically just how the two type of inks uh, work with respect to each other. So here again, I'm darkening up these brighter areas and then I will come back in with my uh, peacock feather, the peaked raspberry and the wilted violet and try to blend everything nicely. Again, at this stage, I'm using a very light hand because I don't want to cover up those areas too much. And just, you know, a little warning, this, uh, sta at this stage, the sponge applicators for my lighter colors got a bit stained with the black suit, but I don't think it's really a problem. Next time I use them, I'll just make sure to clean them on a scrap piece of paper, and I think I'll be good to go. And here is the stage at which all your work finally starts to make sense, and you, you know, you kind of feel relieved that you didn't waste time and cardstock and ink and hope that you'll get a nice card out of all of this. So I am adding the stars. I am diluting some white acrylic paint on my uh, acrylic block. And I am first adding a fine mist using an old toothbrush. And to add some larger stars, I'm using a paintbrush, which again, I loaded with the diluted white acrylic paint. And to add a little bit of shimmer to the card, which is nice but really subtle, I'm also using the silver color from my Ganzai Tambi palette. I have the palette of 36, so I also diluted that and splattered it on my background. And this is my Space Pirate. I actually altered an image from the Ahoy Matey stamp set. I added some lines and some dots to the ship and the sail, and I colored them with cool gray so that they would look like metal. And I also added some helmets to the cat and the pirate because obviously you need a helmet to be in outer space. Sadly, I did not record the coloring process for these images. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing how I did that. So in particular, how I altered this space uh, image to make it into a space pirate because I think it's fun to stretch your supplies. And so maybe this is interesting to you. And I would just make another video if you want me to. So I trimmed down my panels using the largest die from the crazy stitched frame dies uh, by Crafting Desert Divas and I am uh, mounting my backgrounds on some black cardstock that I cut at the standard A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I am using my Tonic Studios Funky Tape Runner to adhere my galaxy background to my card base. I am using dry adhesive at this point because the black cardstock that I'm using as a base is not very thick and I didn't want it to work. 
And I'm now adhering this sentiment banner that I cut down uh, from Sanina Sola White cardstock, which is also the cardstock I use to print my images on. Uh, so I made this banner using my guillotine trimmer. And to glue down my images, I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue because a liquid adhesive gives you a little bit of time to wiggle things in place and have them positioned as you want them. So I tend to use it for my, especially for my images when I can. And I am repeating the same steps to assemble this other card here, which is the one I made using the distress sinks. For this one, I used the flag banner die, so one of the dice in this set by Crafting Desert Divas, uh, to cut down my sentiment banner and then I'm adhering everything in place. And I have to say that I really like the way these cards turned out. I think they both look really beautiful. Uh, again, the one on the left is the one I made with the distress inks. And it has a brighter, um, you know, richer look. So the colors are more intense. And the one on the right is the one I made with the oxides and which look more soft, more muted, but it has this really gorgeous halo effect around the brighter colors, which I think is really unique. And let me know which one is your favorite. And that's it. These are my cards for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If so, please let me know in the comments below. Leave this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. You can also visit my blog for the full list of supplies. And I hope I'll be back soon with another video. Ciao!